In this video, you guys are gonna learn about how to stop getting stuck in your downswing. So there's gonna be three ways or three things that you can focus on so that you can free up your arms and not have that straining feeling on the way down and so that you have a lot of more freedom when you hit the golf shot. And if you guys are interested in sending your swings in to me, you can visit my profile on the Skillist app and I will leave the link to that in the description box. But that way, if you guys are, are struggling with anything, then I can take a look at what you're doing and kind of prescribe the specific drills for you and kind of analyze what you're doing. So reason number one has to do with how you're positioning your trail arm in the downswing. So a lot of people that feel stuck or kind of jammed in the downswing have this idea that their right arm has to be attached, like completely attached to their rib cage on their side, kind of like this, okay? So even in the backswing, a lot of people just think that they have to keep this really close to them, okay? And that'll make their backswing quite flat as well. And when they come down, since that arm is like kind of pulled behind their body and against the rib cage, their arm can't freely move in front of their stomach. So that trail arm, should be a lot more free and you can kind of see how that trail arm is moving a lot more across my stomach, okay, right in front of me, as opposed to being stuck against me like this way. So if I come in with my trail arm against me like this, then the only thing I can really do to get the club to the ball is to just throw my wrist at it, okay, or I would have to like really excessively turn myself. Okay, so when people are in that position, they, they feel stuck because their arms, are, are, the arms can't get in front of them, all right? So what you wanna actually do instead is you don't wanna keep it attached. There should be some amount of space between like your tricep and your rib cage, okay? It doesn't have to be like way up here. You don't want it to like fly away from you, okay? There has to be some amount so that like at least your elbow is kind of pointing down, okay? If it's kind of, against you, that it's, it's kind of like almost pointing behind you, your elbow. So if you see the, the position here, if it's attached to me in my backswing, my elbow kind of points behind me. If I get a little bit more up and away from my rib cage, the elbow kind of points more downwards. So it's okay to have a bit of space that'll actually help you produce a bit more speed um, and a bit more power and a bit more height in your backswing there. Okay, so that's one thing to look out for. So if you keep some space in here, then when you come down, then you, you'll have a bit more freedom as you transition, as, as opposed to you kind of pulling it right into you like this. Okay, so that's one thing to watch out for and should really free your arms up. Okay, so reason number two actually has to do with how people start their takeaway. So the mistake, just like I explained kind of in reason number one, right, the mistake is that people don't really turn their bodies to initiate their takeaway, but they instead, they kind of pull their arm across their chest instead, okay? So when I just pull my arm across without turning my body, you can see how my trail arm like pulls kind of behind my body like this. So then you kind of get that position where your right arm is stuck against your rib cage, which I explained in the previous reason. So what you wanna learn to do instead is that you have to really increase the amount that your body turns without moving your arms very much, okay? So remember, the mistake is that you're moving your arms quite excessively, but not your body enough. But instead, you wanna move your body without moving your arms very much. So you can see when I get my body to open up, my, my arms are a little bit more free. I don't have to attach anything against my side. A really simple drill that you guys can do is you can just grip the club like normal, and you wanna place the shaft just gently against your your trail neck, like kind of right in here. So again, from the, from the front view, you can probably see how I'm just positioning it. You don't have to worry about where your arms are, just, just kind of gently place it right here. So then when you're in your posture, all you gotta do is just make sure that you fully turn your body, okay? My shoulders are turning kind of at least to 90 degrees. And then from here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stretch out my arms, okay? And at this point, my arms are only about at the halfway position. So my lead arm is kind of parallel to the ground. It's okay to have a slight bend in that trail arm. But what this drill does is that it makes you focus on getting your body to turn and then just getting your arms to be straight at this position. So if you can get into that position here, you're gonna feel a lot more turn relative to your arms, okay? And then right away, you should feel a lot more space here uh, between your trail arm and your, and your rib cage. 
And that'll give you a good idea. So when you actually go to hit the golf ball, you can kind of get into that same position with your arms and your chest instead of looking kind of like this. You can kind of see the difference, how I'm just pulling my arm across me versus getting the shoulder, the body to turn, and my arms kind of staying more so like directly in front of my chest, okay? So that's, that's another visual way to check if you're doing it a, a lot more correct. At this point here, if your hands are like more so like over your right shoulder at this point, you see my chest is over here, my hands are like really across me like excessively, versus when you do it more correct, then my hands are like a little bit more directly in front of my chest, okay? So that, that should actually get your right arm to straighten out a little bit more. It should feel a lot more straight because if you did pull it across your chest, that right arm would kind of pull behind you and you'd see a lot more bending in that trail arm, okay? So that's a great exercise that you can do. Get it to here. You get your body to turn and then you just stretch out your arms. Your hands should be a little bit more directly in front of the chest. You should feel a lot more space between your right arm and your rib cage. And if you want, I mean, you can even, even hit some shots if you're feeling confident enough, okay? But when you turn, you extend it out, okay? And then you can give it a shot. But if, if you're not comfortable doing that, um, just rehearse it a couple of times, get yourself in the right position, get a feel, and then just try to get yourself in that same position next time you're hitting a shot. So reason number three has to do with your trail leg or your trail knee as you make the downswing. So what this looks like is when you make the backswing when you come down, people tend to like thrust this knee towards the golf ball really excessively, okay? And that'll cause their hip and everything to kind of move forward, posture kind of move backward. It's kind of like a, a, a early extension, all right? But you can focus on this by only just focusing on what your trail knee does. So when people feel stuck, when that trail knee comes forward, when their hands come in, they feel like they don't have a lot of space between their hands and their thighs, okay? So then they kind of feel, uh, they, they look really close like this, okay? What should happen is if you were to draw an imaginary line like kind of right in front of my knees here, when you go through it, those, that knee shouldn't kind of thrust beyond that line. So when you go through it like that and your knee doesn't thrust out towards the golf ball, then you, you give your arms and your hands a bit more space through the hitting area, okay? As opposed to this going forward and your, your hands almost kind of touching your thighs like this. A way to practice this is that you can actually, I don't have a range bucket, but if you have a range bucket that you can use, you just place your right foot inside of the bucket. So the opening of the bucket is facing you with your foot inside of it. So the, the rim or the edge of the bucket is pretty much like pretty close to the shin of your right leg. For the purpose of this video, we'll just place like kind of a, a border kind of in front of my knees. It's kind of the same thing. But with your foot in that range bucket, if you were to come into impact and, and your shin touched the edge of that bucket, then that would probably tell you that your, your, your right leg is kind of thrusting into the golf ball too much. All right? So what you want to feel like instead of, if, instead of thrusting it forward, you want to feel like your trail leg kind of turns a little bit more internally like this. It kind of turns in just a bit, okay? So that would prevent it from thrusting out, kind of like this, as opposed to you kind of turning it more inwards this way. So from the side view, you can see that when I thrust my knee forward, my heel kind of moves straight up and down, okay? What you can feel instead is that you can see that my, my trail leg kind of turns more inwards or more internal as opposed to this here. So if you feel that and you're not touching the border with your shin, or if you draw a line in front, you're not crossing that border, then again, that should allow you to feel like your lower body stays more back behind and just feel a lot more kind of room here with your arms. So it should help you help free up your arms through the hitting area. Thank you guys so much for watching. So if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K Moss. But other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video.